Last time we were together was in Bagram, Afghanistan. We were all wounded. Uh, we managed to get together this week for a pheasant hunt, Foundation for Exceptional Warriors. And on December 11th, trucks got hit. I was the gunner and uh, was medevaced out of theater to Walter Reed where I recovered. I uh, broke both my legs, my left arm, both hands, ruptured an artery. Spent nine months in the hospital, was wounded in both legs, both hips, my left arm and left hand. The day of our going in there on our ambush, uh, there were six killed and 19 wounded in my platoon. With uh, one of my two of my best friends that were uh, injured with me in Afghanistan in 2006. You see these other people and you hear their stories and they're getting by and you know we're all can get by together you know we're not alone hey it's ricky with the foundation for exceptional warriors this hunt we're headed to hamill south dakota to hunt with bull creek outfitters owned and operated by Dwayne and laura welker and family we have some exceptional men of valor on this hunt and this is their story. Chase Jean, I retired as a sergeant. Adam Gordon, uh, retired staff sergeant. Ben Blydorn, retired sergeant. Well, I got called up to ask if I wanted to do a pheasant hunt with the Foundation for Exceptional Warriors. And I was like, yeah, and then I thought about having these guys. I called these two guys and asked them if they wanted to go, and Chris Wolfberger told me that if I could uh, see if I could get, you know, some donation for their plane tickets, and I had that the next day. Got them plane tickets and got them out here. So it was a paid trip out here? Yeah. Did it cost you guys anything? No. Couldn't Come even on. buy a soda. He yelled at me. We were with uh, 1st Battalion, 32nd Infantry, 10th Mountain Division. Uh, last time we were together was in Bagram, Afghanistan. We were all winning in the same mission, uh, the Korngal Valley, August 3rd, 2006. They tried to put me under for surgery, and I wouldn't let them come near me until I found out where these two were. When you got there, I asked where you guys were, and I made the doctor. I didn't know you thought the bird went. Yeah, I didn't know that. You guys weren't there, and I about lost my shit. I wouldn't let them come near me. The doctor had started making phone calls, and the different, the different fobs found out they were in a soft bed. Then okay. once that happened, I was out, and then I think by the time I came back, to you guys were there. It was about an eight-hour walk because we searched the village on the way there. Yeah, for eight hours we got. We got to a riverbed, which I didn't really want to be in because we we're in the low ground. And a and a basically got scared and started making excuses. We don't have enough food, and we we're like, we'll give you food, we don't have water, and pretty much left us. Well, we don't have night vision, we don't want to be out at night. a and wouldn't refuse to go to that town because they knew it was bad. Yeah. And then uh, the a and a quit out on us, and then uh, they went back to base, and then uh, instead of letting us come back and turn around with them, our commander told us to drive on. So we got to the highest ground we could get, which the terrain in Cornwall Valley is shale rock, steep. steep. It's you're basically on goat trails, which sucks because then they know where you're gonna walk. But and these guys are watching us the whole time we're leaving. We're picking up yeah. icon chatter. We're in the bottom of a fishbowl in our base, so they're sitting in the hilltops, on the tops of the mountains, just looking down at us the whole time anyway. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, we got to the high ground, and as soon as we set up security, as soon as the sun was basically directly in our eyes. And all hill broke loose. <laughs> yeah, they got us in like a U-shaped ambush. They were about, they were on other ridges, so they were pretty far away. Yeah. But as soon as it kicked off, I got hit immediately in the back. <laughs> he got shot pulling my ass out. I got hit just about the same time. I uh, emptied one mag and pulled out my compass to try to start calling for fire was sitting down on the back of my heels behind a bush, whipped out my compass and looked down, and the round came right between my legs. And at first I thought I got hit in my uh, nether regions, because I just kind of felt it. Uh, and I looked down, I'm like, oh. and I looked down and saw the hole that went through my boot and out the back, and I was like, okay, I can deal with that. So he pretty much called in 360 degrees of almost, of, well it was, huh? Yeah, the shrapnel, a few shrapnel. Around if he wouldn't have called in artillery, we would have been either captured or killed. You don't go out without that guy. Well, Chase was laying out in the open too, and there was weapon jammed, and, and bullets were hitting all around. I saw he was hit, so I yelled from the medic and ran down to him. 
grabbed him and started pulling up and the medic came up and helped me pull him into cover. And I saw him, he was he was hit. He was on the radio with bullets landing all over the damn place. Yeah, bullets and, uh, kicking up everywhere. Him and as soon as I got to him, that's when I uh, that's when I got hit through the knee. Took an AK-47 round through the back of his knee. Yeah, what it did is uh, okay. round went through my, my knee and my femur and shattered my femur. He had pretty much a huge erector set on his leg. We we're both yeah. in bed. And the one time I got up, I wheeled down to his room, about passed out because I'd been laying on a bed so long. And okay. I said, hey, and then I wheeled back. Yeah, you're joining here, man. Our medic, I've seen him under fire. Like, he did a tracheotomy on that IED at. Uh, and the National Guard got popped. Yeah, I watched him do that. That was a 20 year old kid doing a tracheotomy in a, in a firefight. Okay. Yeah, I bled out. I had a lot of. I lost a lot of blood. Ben said he just seen my back explode. And if it would have been for Doc Marchetti, I'd probably have been dead because I lost a ton of blood. We managed to get together this week for a pheasant hunt, uh, courtesy of uh, the Foundation for Exceptional Warriors. Had a great time. <clears throat> it's good to see the guys again. Not just talk to them on the phone. Or... Okay. It's good to see yeah. everybody and see see them all doing good and everything like that. You know. You don't see each other. I mean, you can hear it on the phone. He's not going to tell me he's hurting or nothing like that. You know, it's it's always, you know, I'm doing fine, but actually physically see them, seeing them doing well and getting older and fatter. Mm -hmm. It was good to hang out again and see these guys. We were like, if we were not training, we were hanging out anyway. These guys don't want anything in return for their sacrifice. Ben and Adam would never tell you, but they both received a bronze star with Valor for their acts of heroism that day in the Corvo Valley. I am Sergeant Bruce Dunlap. I was in the U.S. Army. I was military police. 2006, I was deployed in Iraq. Uh, we landed on our base uh, Easter morning. Uh, we did route security, looking for IEDs on the road. And on December 11th, got my, one of my trucks got hit. I was the gunner and uh, was medevaced out of theater to Walter Reed where I recovered. I uh, broke both my legs, my left arm, both hands, ruptured an artery, um, dead on site, dead in at the emergency room there in Baghdad, and, but fought through with some good therapy, two years of physical therapy, 26 operations, and here I am today. I got set up with a few. I had one on deer hunt down in Oklahoma last year with Chris. Uh, I was going to appointments with the VA and they had a pamphlet for the few. And so I called, uh, filled out the uh, application, went deer hunting, and then uh, next year uh, I want to do a fundraiser. So I was called, talking to Chris about that. And so he said, hey, what are you doing next week? It was just a week ago and said nothing. So he goes, let's go pheasant hunting. Uh, what the week meant for me was just a uh, chance of going out here and a few other different stories, you know, that way, you know, for me, it makes me be able to not feel like, you know, kind of relate, you know that other people have gone through some stuff and um, not, it was nice to shoot something other than just a rifle, the shotgun and uh, the few, only only time I've ever shot a rifle or any type of weapon outside Iraq has been with a few. Um, so this is my, this will be the second weekend, second block of time that um, that I've shot a, shot a rifle or shotgun or anything since Iraq. It's just something I've I kind of lost the desire to do, um, and so, but you know, coming out with a purpose, hanging out with the other soldiers, I feel comfortable. Outside of just shooting, I just haven't, like, just hadn't had the desire. But with the other soldiers, it's kind of different. What the tank chair did was really, for one thing, it kind of, yeah, I've missed a part of my thigh, my calves all ate up too. I got a hole in my foot and stuff, and sometimes pride, it's hard to to actually use something that's going to help me because. They told me I was going to be in a wheelchair, and now that I'm not, it's hard for me to want to have to go back. So, you know, the first couple of times using the tank chair was a little humbling, but once I realized, man, I can really enjoy myself and not be in agonizing pain as I'm doing the event, maybe this is uh, the way to go. Why, you know, bite the bullet when you can just roll and everything else. It was just more of my uh, pride getting in the way of wanting to use help. Like I said earlier, it was just, Hearing other people's stories and how they, what they do to cope, and you know, just kind of add that to the tools of resources I use to cope for myself. 
and seeing, you know, it draws strength when you see these other people and you hear their stories and they're getting by and, you know, we're all can get by together. You know, we're not alone. Next summer, I, I have a thing about, I look, I want to go to all the baseball stadiums. So a couple of weeks ago, I thought, I need to get that, I mean, I need to make that happen. Um, that was my plan the day I got hurt. Uh, when we got back, I was going to get away and just kind of do something for myself. Since, you know, we've served over in Iraq with other people, I had it, I got blown up. That's what we were talking about. In fact, when I got blown up, I was telling the guys about this trip, trying to see if they wanted to go with me, and then I got hurt. And, uh, so I read about other people's trips to going to all the stadiums, so I'm going to try to go to all baseball stadiums and raise money for the few, because I love it, you know, I just love working with them, and they've got me out doing things I hadn't done for a while. And it's going to be striking out suicide. So I, I've i worked with a lot of organizations, and, you know, they're all good, but the few, like I said, I don't know if I would go out and shoot with anybody else. I, that, for me, that's pretty sacred. Yeah. My name is Russell Estes. I was in the U.S. Army in Southeast Asia. Um, Vietnam to be exact. I went in in 1966 and was discharged in February 1970 from Fitzsimmons Army Hospital in Denver. Uh, I went to Vietnam in 68 through 69. I was wounded May 31st, 1969, working with the uh, Brownwater Navy on the Saigon River bordering Cambodia which we couldn't go into Cambodia. But sometimes we were there. <laughs> <laughs> the day of our going in there on our ambush, uh, there were six killed and 19 wounded in my platoon. Uh, I was a Corporal E4 at the time. Um, spent nine months in the hospital, was wounded in both legs both hips, my left arm and left hand. I'd say it's been 45 years. It's taken, I've had a lot of rehab. Um, I'm pretty functional at this time. And at this time, uh, this was the greatest thing I've ever been. I've never, we never had anything like this when the few and I found out about it through a friend of mine in Kansas City and he, uh, Clyde, Chris, and I were both in the 1st Infantry Division in Southeast Asia. We were both 11 Bravos. And uh, he told about it, because a friend of his called, said, let's apply. We applied for a, on a buddy system. And we both got picked. The week before we were supposed to come here, Clyde found out that he had prostate cancer. He had to start 38 treatments. Clyde's two years older than I am. Well, but he started his treat, but he can't have a pause, so Clyde didn't, he could, didn't get to come to this. And now he wanted to awful bad, because the day before we left, he called me and says, well, bring me some pheasants back as well. And I said, Clyde, I'll be glad to. And I've enjoyed myself. The camaraderie between soldiers is just, in, that's what I expect, because I'm in a different generation, but we all fought in everything for the same reason and uh, I couldn't communicate or couldn't relate to a lot of things they did because mine was a different war yeah. it, it, it was fought differently we had a guerrilla type and you guys were fighting against IEDs and all this stuff see we had booby traps and so most of our fighting was done at night there's a lot of guys that are hurting here and it'll t it, time heals a lot. I know they've heard that because I heard that from my dad in World War II because he was wounded also. But time heals a lot, but you want to be healed. Now. And com camaraderie here, everybody is helping everyone. They can relate. It's something you can relate to. And all combat veterans, you know, they've been there. They um, We weren't in the rear with the gear. No, we weren't. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I had about... Uh, Eight, ten, maybe twelve years there. I was a pretty wild child. I'll give you a, a prime example. I hope that they all relate. The Vietnam veterans were spit upon and called upon when they come back. They won't. They'd come back as a group. They'd come back as individuals. One of the things that I learned from this is the, the being the Vietnam veteran, and we weren't welcomed home or have anything like that. They also have a Vietnam Veterans Association, 
And our motto is, never again will one group of veterans downgrade or forgive another veteran. World War II Korean veterans, they said, as far as speakers we concerned, well, you lost. Said, we never lost a battle. It wasn't a real war. It was called a conflict. Uh, and that's our model. We try to live that. And these veterans out here, do combat veterans, they know exactly where they're coming. They've been there. It gave me a lot of uh, concern because I saw myself 40 years ago. I was having the same, a lot of problems too. And they come in there and they're coming together. And this would give them, uh, there's other things out there. I mean, just trusting your fellow man. I mean, the veterans join the vet, and the few is a veterans group. And that is the best thing going. Run by veterans. That's right. Run by, and we're, they're not making any money, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> and believe it or not, things get better. And I enjoyed this trip. It's it's really really good because things haven't changed. We all take the thing. We love our country. We wouldn't went over. Yeah. Sergeant Chase Jean. I was with Alpha Company. 2nd Platoon, 10th Mountain Division, 132 Infantry. On a pheasant hunt, but the main thing is getting together with uh, one of my, two of my best friends that were uh, injured with me in Afghanistan in 2006. We were on a, almost a, we were on a combat patrol in the Korngal Valley, and we were in, caught in a U-shaped ambush, and all three of us were shot. I was shot in the lower back, paralyzed from the waist down and shot in the arm. So it was good to see those guys and reunite with them and hang out. It was awesome. Just pretty much to be able to see them again. So, I had a blast. Well, I got to use that tank chair and the action track chair, which gets me in the field where a regular chair can't. And how cool was that? That was awesome. When was the last time you were able to walk through a field? Eight years ago, yeah. before I was injured. So, well, in the future, I've already told Chris Wolfenberger that I want. I've already talked to landowners and ranchers in my area to help put on hunts for other veterans, deer hunts. It doesn't matter what hunt it is, as long as guys get together and reunite and have a good time. Why is that important? Because you build a pretty strong bond with those guys. You get really tight. So, that never goes away. But it's good because it gets you and you either get off, basically get off your ass and do something, or you sit in the house and not get off the couch. So, it gets you out there and doing stuff and hanging out. The more you do that, the better you feel. These events help with that a lot. It sucks because it's the last day, but we've already planned to meet up and do some stuff next year. Well, my girlfriend came with me. She's an avid outdoorsman, woman, and uh, she she had a good time. She's out there shooting birds more well. She probably out shoot all of us. But I don't know. She was awesome. Like me and her are into the same everything: shooting outdoors, all that. I wanted her to come out here and go hunting because she wants to do it. And she's really good. Support plus she can help me drive. I just asked him, I was like, hey, you know, it's a long drive. I was like, I have a really bad nerve pain. I was wondering if she'd be able to go with me because she's just been awesome. I mean, we've been together this less than a year. So, you know, it's not like she was with me before my injury or when I was in the military and stuff. So me and her are a lot closer. So if we can come out here for a week and not fight, that's a, and just shoot birds and hang out and have fun. That's a good sign. Meeting uh, Ben and Adam, or, for her to meet him was really good, so it's important to me that she met them. Staff Sergeant Retired, Adam Gordon, uh, 1st Battalion, 32nd Infantry Regiment, 10th Mountain Division, United States Army. That was my first day pheasant hunting. I got 14 birds in a, in a cooler. Here with the Foundation for Exceptional Warriors. The reason for this event is to help wounded warriors and uh, for us was to reunite with some of my army buddies that I hadn't seen in a long time. 
Uh, the last time I saw my buddies was in Bagram, Afghanistan, uh, when we were all in the hospital after being injured. 13, I did 13 months in Iraq and six months in Afghanistan. This weekend was great. It was a good chance to reunite and see these guys again face to face rather than talking on the phone and get to see them, see how they're doing, and go out and have a good time, see Chase get out and do things he doesn't usually get to do. In fact, makes me want to get involved with the, the few. I think it was good for us. And good for the other guys that were there. Yeah, I seen the tank chair in action and the uh, action track. It was really cool when uh, I mean Chase had been able to go out and go salmon fishing and do other things that he probably wouldn't even do, wasn't wouldn't do unless he had been injured. So uh, just seeing him get opportunities like this is really cool. Yeah, it helped me. It was just <coughs> nice to see the guys and hang out. And even if the hunt didn't go well, it was still a good time. It's fun to go out and do new things. And, yeah, events like this, especially when you're dealing with guys that you serve with. And, you know, even if you didn't serve with them, it's still nice to be around guys that kind of understand the mentality and have been there. And I want to thank Chase and Chris Wolfenbarger and you know uh, Dwayne and Laura Welker and uh, you know, Ann and JT and all the guys that helped uh, guide the hunt and took care of us. And Staff Sergeant Jacob Cook. I am uh, currently with the Missouri National Guard. I'm a uh, supply sergeant. Joined the military in 2001 and uh, been on two combat tours. Uh, went to Iraq as a uh, mechanic, um, broke my leg in Iraq, and uh, come back and rehabilitated and did physical therapy and was uh, pretty close to being discharged, for medically discharged for my leg and I wasn't, I wasn't ready for that and I didn't think I, I think I could be real rehabilitated and <clears throat> I didn't want to be out, I wanted to serve, you know. Yeah. And, uh, so I got rehabilitated, then uh, about a year, year and a half later, I got deployed to Afghanistan, Coast Providence. Uh, we did uh, route clearance, and uh, I was a 12 Bravo. Uh, 12 Bravo is a combat engineer. We'd, uh, we'd find IEDs and clear the way, mostly for the infantry. <laughs> and uh, come back, and i am uh, got a wife and a kid, and currently live in Missouri. And I was an outdoorsman with uh, my father when I was a kid. And then uh, before uh, I joined the service, he passed. And with him passing, I kind of lost interest in it. A friend of a friend referred me. Okay. And uh, I heard about all the good things they were doing, about how reconnecting soldiers with the passions and the you know of things they like to do. And, and uh, told me it would be a good thing for me because I was telling him about how I get caught up in work. You know, get caught up in the work and the grind of the army, everyday army stuff. And then I uh, said, you know what, this is what you need. Get, get me caught back down to earth, basically. You know? I mean, the best way to cope with issues or anything like that, or if anybody's having problems with, is being around someone that's been there and done it. I mean, if you can explain situations with people that have been there and done it, and they understand it, it's 10, that's, you know, it's 100% of the problem. And, uh, yeah. When you're doing that with people that know what's going on, and it's hard to explain it to people that don't understand, and it's always, that's that's the biggest problem. I'd I'd love to help out with a few and help all the others that you know. Um, in the past, I've helped individuals in the past in the unit. Um, best I could do. I mean, this would be even a bigger step of another tool to help individuals in my unit, uh, as I'm still currently in. And if, if that'd be a tool that I could use, that'd be amazing because just me being out here the last couple of days in the hunt really uh, got me to sit back and think about some things that are going on and kind of help out individuals. Because when you're talking to the guys and you start talking to them about some of the issues they have and then you start thinking about maybe some of the guys in my unit are still having the same issues. We want to thank David and Judy Dale for making this hunt possible. We want to thank the Welker family for unmatched hospitality. We want to thank Heavy Shot for the shells they donated. If you're looking to go pheasant hunting in South Dakota, I strongly recommend you contact Bull Creek Outfitters. They'll put you on the birds and you'll have a great time doing it. You can contact Dwayne at the number listed below. The Foundation for Exceptional Warriors is a nonprofit organization serving warriors to epitomize honor, valor, and sacrifice. Freedom is not free. It's purchased with the blood and the sacrifice of those who serve. 
The Foundation for Exceptional Warriors, The Few, is honoring these American heroes from every era that have bought our freedom. The Few is led by the same warriors that it serves and assists in the healing process of not only the wounded, but those recognized for acts of valor, special operations, providing cost-free recreational sporting events, not only to reward their immense sacrifice, but to also enhance their mental and physical health. This mission is unique, critical, and long overdue. Contributions are not simply a donation. They are an investment in the futures of exceptional warriors, their families, and this great nation. If you're interested in getting involved in the few, you can check us out on our Facebook page or visit us on our website at exceptionalwarriors.org.